Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. I have grandkids home from the holidays, and I made some focaccia bread. This is really good bread, and if you want to learn to make yeast bread, this could be the easiest one. Here are the ingredients. Please pause and write them down. And hey, while you're paused, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you click the little bell up in the top right, you'll get a notice when I post new videos about twice a week. Now let's get cooking. So here are our ingredients. One and three quarters cup warm to the touch water. That's about 105 degrees. Half cup olive oil now, half cup later. This is five to six cups of flour, all purpose. This is my yeast and I'm using a scant tablespoonful. I'll explain that later. This is a one tablespoonful of sugar, not absolutely necessary, uh, and I'll explain that. And this is a tablespoonful of salt, and I'm using kosher salt, and I made a real mistake with the salt that I'll explain later too. So I use instant yeast. If you're using active dry, you can use one of the little packets, which is two and a quarter teaspoons full. So I'm going to show you how to proof it in case you're using active dry yeast and you don't have to do this with instant but the water is in and that water is at about 105 degrees and I put in the yeast and the sugar. We're going to let this sit until the yeast gets activated. The sugar is not absolutely necessary in bread by the way. It's partly for flavor and partly to give your yeast a little jump start, a little energy drink for the morning. So we're just going to stir this up a little and then I'm going to go away and wait until it starts to bloom like this. Um, you know, you don't have to do this with instant yeast, but mine's getting a little age on it. I've had it in the freezer for almost a year. So I'm adding the half cup olive oil and we'll use another half cup as we go along. I really think this should be called olive oil bread because it's going to be in it and on top of it and under it and around it and then after you're done you soak some more in. Then I'm going to add my flour. I'll start adding the flour uh, about half of it, maybe a little more than half of it right now. Now the reason I say five to six cups of flour and I've measured out five cups is because depending on the temperature and the uh, humidity outside, you may need more or less flour. So five cups is going to be the minimum. Here is my tablespoonful of kosher salt. Now let's start this mixing. It's a very stormy rainy day here and I end up using almost six cups of flour, but I've done it where five was enough. So really the weather does make a difference. Uh, I'm not gonna you won't see me add it all, but I'll I'll show you how to determine how much you need to add as we go along So I add the initial five cups kind of slowly uh, because it just incorporates in better that way and as it's mixing I'm still adding the original five cups a little at a time until we get it all in and when all of that flour is in I'm gonna lower the bowl and scrape it down a little bit. You know, when it's humid, very humid in your house and outside, it um, flour can feel almost sticky. It really changes the properties of your flour. So this is not incorporating the way I want it to, so I just scraped it down a little bit. Now what we're looking for at this point, and what we're looking for at this point is for it, the dough to all come together and start to rise up your dough hook and to start to pull clean from the sides. When you get to this point, set a timer and knead it for about six minutes. I've added almost another cup, a couple tablespoons full at a time. And after six minutes, this is what you should have. This is a very elastic, somewhat sticky dough. It's not a, a really tight, dry dough. And we're gonna do the window pane test which basically is oil your fingers a little bit and start to pull it as thin as you can. 
and if it will pull thin to the point that you can start to see um, daylight through it, and, and I can. I'm never sure what you can see on the videos, but this has been kneaded enough. It's very elastic. Uh, feels very good. And I've put a good amount of olive oil in my proofing bowl here. You can use any bowl you want. Just know that this is going to double in size. So give yourself plenty of room. And then I'm going to take the dough out and just form it into a ball. You can put it down on a work surface if you want to. I just do it in my hands. You need to add a little flour to keep it from being quite so sticky. Uh, and my, my hands are oiled, by the way. So just forming it, and I'm going to put it down in here, uh, and then I'm going to add a little more olive oil to the top of it. Usually I just flip it, but I want more oil than that um, for this recipe. Like I say, this recipe takes lots of olive oil. It should be called olive oil bread. So I'm going to oil it nicely, and then you want to cover it. You can use plastic wrap. Whoops, there's a little hand from my helper. You know, I usually have a helper off to the side while I'm making a video. She flipped her little hand there to show me it was clean. So we're going to let this rise an hour to an hour and a half until it's doubled in size. You always want to go by how it looks and not the time. While it's rising, I'm going to make an infusion the easy way. I'm using garlic and rosemary to flavor this bread. You can use many different things, oregano... Italian seasoning, if you're one of those people that dry tomatoes and crush them up to a powder, this would be a great place to use some of that. So this is a tablespoonful of minced garlic. You can use fresh. I had some minced in a jar from the grocery store. And then this is some of my dried rosemary that I preserve every year from my rosemary plant. You can use fresh, but I'm crushing this. If you use fresh, you want to chop it just enough to let the flavor out and I'm gonna put in here oh, I don't know about a teaspoonful uh, and then I'm gonna put this in the microwave for 45 seconds to get the oil hot and to release those flavors into this oil you can do this on the stove uh, to me it's just easier to do it in the microwave I'm gonna mix it up a little set it back to the back here let it cool we'll use this in our next step and it's been just an hour, and you see my big puffy ball of dough here. This is beautiful. And here's my baking sheet, and I've put a lot of olive oil on it. I'm actually using a new baking sheet, which turned out to be a little smaller than I usually use. Um, and it does make a difference in the bread. I usually use a bigger one. So I'm going to deflate this. When you use a bigger one, it may not come out all the way to the edge, and that's okay. Uh, this one did come all the way to the edge, and so it made my bread come out just a little bit thicker. Uh, it's good. It's yummy. But, you know, I'll, I'll just let you know, if it doesn't come all the way to the edges of your uh, pan, then that's fine. You must use one with sides, though, because there's going to be even more olive oil involved, and you don't want it to come out all over your oven. So I'm not using a rolling pin. I just knock the air out. And then I'm going to spread it out in this pan uh, and sort of knock the bubbles out as I go. And I find myself playing with this dough as I work with it. It feels so good. Like when I was a kid playing with clay. You know, I was a kid before Play-Doh. So I'm just going to spread this out as much as I can. And then I'm going to just go away and let it rest for about five minutes and that will make it uh, easier to work with and a little bit less elastic. But you see how elastic that is? You can just pull it to the shape you want. You want to try to move it so that it is kind of even thickness, even though you probably won't succeed totally. So I'm going away for five minutes, and then I'll be back. So our dough has rested, and now comes the fun part. We're going to dot our dough. Uh, and dot's not really a good description. We're going to rough it up. I'm going to put my fingers down in here and kind of poke and pull. And I don't mean just to make little dots on top of the dough. 
your fingers need to go all the way down. They need to make openings in the dough all the way to the pan. Focaccia bread needs to be uh, craggy and rough. And some of the flavor comes from that. It makes openings for the oil to get in. All that lovely garlicky rosemary oil needs to cook into the bread, not just on top of it. And you're, you're actually uh, supposed to top it with salt. And I'll have to tell you now, as I poke little holes in playing, I'm back to the uh, Play-Doh again, that focaccia bread is supposed to have uh, a generous layer of sea salt on top, or coarse salt. And I forgot to do that. And, you know, probably because I had so many kids in and out, and I'll blame them. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So you'll see that I failed to put the salt on top of this, but what I did was salt it at the end, and it turned out just fine. But you can see here that I'm brushing on this um, infused olive oil, and I'm actually getting some of the garlic and the rosemary on here, and you'll see the little dots after it cooks. Uh, some people want to strain that out. I didn't want to strain it out. So generously applying the uh, garlic and making more holes where they're needed um, and it's okay if this garlic just pools up uh, in the little holes I'm roughing it up a little more as I go this is going to need to rise for about an hour 45 minutes to an hour until it gets big and puffy you don't have to cover it the oil keeps it from forming a skim and here we go big puffy pan my oven is preheated to 450 degrees. In we go for 15 minutes. And this is what we have. And I want you to see the texture there. It's a little crunchy on top, but this is soft and moist all the way through. It's just wonderful. Now, again, we're going to get the olive oil. And I'm going to put a very light brushing of olive oil over the whole thing and with all this oil I have to tell you I'm making this video the next day it's still soft and moist so I'm just gonna loosen it from the sides of the pan and it really didn't need it and then I'm gonna flip this out on a cooling rack and once I get it flipped out I'll be back Isn't that just gorgeous now just a note for convenience at the point where I punched the dough down, you can refrigerate it overnight and finish up the next day. So I'm going to cut this, and it's traditionally cut in squares or strips. And, you know, this bread can be served as uh, on the side with pasta. It can be cut into bigger pieces and used as a sandwich bun. A focaccia sandwich, you can put anything in it. I'm going to cut it open and let you see the texture. It holds up really well to a sandwich. Uh, I'm not adding butter to taste this because it doesn't need butter. It's full of oil. And right about here is when I realized, oh, I forgot the salt. So just so you know, I did just a tiny uh, thin film of olive oil and salted it pretty generously with kosher salt. It does need the salt to be focaccia bread. So... I hope you try this. If you're one of those people that's afraid of yeast bread, this is the place to start. It's fun. It's easy. You're almost guaranteed to have some good results. I hope you give this a try. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.